whether still little more than babies or approaching adolescence, every girl in my community will eventually be initiated into adulthood. Our initiation is considered a way of helping us find a place in society, but in reality, it's a way of limiting it, limiting us. I remember the cold surface on which I was laid. I remember the hands that held me down. I didn't know what was being done to my body. Now I do. It's called female genital mutilation. A physically, psychologically and emotionally harmful practice done for non-medical reasons and a gross violation of human rights. Though when working within communities, other words are used to adopt a respectful language and foster dialogue, this is its internationally agreed upon name. There are four types of this practice, all consisting of the mutilation of a young woman's genitalia. Through the partial or total removal of the clitoris, or the narrowing of the vaginal opening via a seal, or the piercing, incising, or cauterizing of the genital area. This harmful practice is used to control a woman's sexual pleasure, behavior, and her role in society. It risks our health and infringes on our right to choice, to freedom from violence, to freedom from torture, to freedom from discrimination on the basis of sex. It is important to call it by its name. My name is Rose, and I'm a survivor. I'm not a passive victim, but a woman who endured trauma, stood up again, stronger, with a story and a voice with which to speak for myself. This is my story, but it is important to give any other survivor the ability to choose how to speak about her trauma and how to define herself. Words conduct meaning. Words shape narratives. They help us communicate, explain, discuss. A delicate matter must be handled with sensitivity. We should use the right words to empower survivors to speak about it without stigmatizing, without demeaning, and with respect. Let's use the right words to demand an end to female genital mutilation.